Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about k-means cluster analysis. But even before I proceed to demonstrate how we can work on k-means cluster analysis, I request all of you to like, share, subscribe, and press the bell icon. As you can see here in the screen, we have a telecom data. In this data set, we have a telecommunication provider who wants to segment his customer base by service usage pattern. If the customers can be classified by usage, the company can offer more attractive packages to its customers. We will be using the K-means cluster analysis procedure to find the subset of similar customers. One question that might come to your mind is, what exactly do we mean by K-means cluster analysis? There are two points that we need to keep in mind when we talk about K-means cluster analysis. K-means cluster analysis is an example of unsupervised learning technique. K-means cluster analysis procedure is a tool for finding natural groupings of cases. Lastly, it's a technique which is most useful to segment large data sets. How large? When you have thousands of records, then k-means cluster analysis is a good technique to obtain segments. If you have a small segment, it is better to use hierarchical cluster analysis rather than k-means cluster analysis. With this background, let us proceed to execute k-means cluster analysis in IBM SPSS. First, let me click on the Analyze menu. I'll choose the option Classify. This gives me a panel which has multiple options. I will choose the second item from the top, which is called as K-means Cluster Analysis. So this is the navigation to access K-means Cluster Analysis in IBM SPSS. Let me click on this particular option. I'll choose the reset button. As you can see here, in the canvas on the left-hand side, you have all the variables that are present in the data set. These are the variables which you can use to build your clustering solution. The k-means cluster analysis also offers different options like iterate, save, and options. First things first, let me select all the variables and push it into the variables list. The default number of clusters would be two. Let me go ahead and change it to three. What this does is it gives me a three cluster solution. What is the optimal number of clusters? That depends upon both statistical considerations as well as business requirement. We can feel free to experiment with multiple cluster solution. We can provide three clusters, four clusters, as well as five clusters. Once we choose three as the number of clusters, we can then move on to the iterate option, which is present at the top right-hand side. Let me go ahead and click on the iterate option. You can see here, SPSS displays the maximum iterations. The default option is 10. Let me increase it to 20, then choose continue. The next option is the save button. Let me click on the save button and choose cluster membership. What this does is it generates a new column in SPSS, which indicates the group membership of each and every record. I'll click on continue. The last option is the options tab. In the options tab, you can choose initial cluster centers. You can also click on ANOVA table. Let me click on continue. Now, what do these selections produce? These selections produce a three cluster solution. Let me go and look at the output to see how the cluster solution appears. Let me choose OK now. You see here, there are different tables the very first table is what is called as initial cluster center. What is this initial cluster center? 
initial cluster centers are the variable values of the k well spaced observations i like to ignore this for time being and proceed to the anova table you can see each of the variables displayed along the row you have the cluster mean square degrees of freedom error mean square degrees of freedom and finally the f statistic you also have the p value for each of the value for each of the variable rather now how do we interpret this the anova table indicates which variables contribute the most to your cluster solution i repeat the anova table indicates which variables contribute the most to your cluster solution i like to draw your attention to the f statistic values variables with large f values provide the greatest separation between the clusters variables with the very very small f value provide the least separation between the clusters when you look at the f statistic value some of the big numbers that i can see is multiple line service because the f statistic value is 77 similarly you can see here log wireless service and also the second variable toll free services since the f statistic value is on the higher side we can say that these are the variables which produce the greatest separation between the clusters further when we look at the significance value the significance value for each of these variables is less than 0.05 indicating that these variables separate the clusters quite well one interesting thing to note here is when you look at caller id variable or call waiting service both of these variables have a p value greater than 0.05 0.05 ideally speaking we would like to have the p value less than 0.05 additionally we we'll like to also look at high f values because high f values provide greater separation between the clusters let me now click on the final cluster centers you can see all the variables along the rows and then you can see in the column cluster number 1 cluster number 2 and cluster number 3 these numbers are nothing but the mean of the variable within that cluster for example the average value of long distance variable is 0.76 within the first cluster within the second cluster it is minus 0.6 within the third cluster it is minus 0.27 so what you see here is nothing but the variable mean within that segment when you look at the first segment you can see here there is a positive value for each of the variable what does this indicate this simply indicates that members who belong to the first cluster are big spenders who purchase a lot of services so we can profile the customers by looking at the final cluster centers i'll repeat the first cluster represents big spenders because it represents those customers who purchase a lot of services let me now look at the second cluster when you look at the second cluster you don't see very very high values the way we saw in the first cluster but nevertheless you can call them as moderate spenders who mostly purchase calling services why do i say they purchase calling services when you look at variables like caller id or call waiting service or or call forwarding service and finally three way calling service you see values which are in the range of 0.7 0.8 0.9 0.8 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 
a few negative values here. You can call the third cluster as small spenders who spend very little and do not purchase many services. I see some big numbers like 1.26, 1.51, 1.07. The rest of them are smaller numbers. I also see 1.18 here, which means that members who belong to the third cluster mostly purchase voice mailing service. Some of them may purchase paging service. Some of them may purchase internet service. Also, they are into electronic billing. So this is how the final cluster center can be used to construct the profile of each segment. Cluster one represents big spenders, cluster two moderate spenders, and cluster three represents small spenders. Let me now go on to the final table, which is called as number of cases in each cluster. What does this indicate? This simply indicates the number of records which belong to each segment. If you look at the first cluster, around 44 members belong to first cluster. In the second cluster, we have 35 members. And in the third cluster, we have 52 members. Unfortunately, members in the third group, though their sample size is relatively higher, they are small spenders. If you want to look at the group membership, what you can do is go back to the data set, scroll to the extreme right side, and you can see here who belongs to which group. Some of these cases have not been assigned to any group, and therefore you can see a blank value here. What I'll do is, I will select this particular column, right click and simply choose the option sort ascending. When I scroll down, you can see a lot of blank cases here because k-means cluster analysis has not been able to identify any cluster for these cases. But as I scroll down, you can see here all those members who belong to the first group. Let me scroll down. You can see here, these are all records wherein people belong to the first group. Similarly, when I scroll down further, you can see a lot of cases who belong to cluster number two. And finally, when I scroll down further, you can see all those members who belong to cluster number three. So this is how a k-means cluster analysis can be used to construct segments in your data set. And once we construct different segments, we will be able to find out their profile and come up with attractive packages to these customers. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. I thank you very much for watching this particular video. I request you to like, share, subscribe, and press the bell icon. Thank you very much. Have a great day.